Welcome to the GIS e-learning package. This is a brief overview of the e-learning package. This GIS package contains four modules. Module 1 is on Introduction to GIS. In Module 2, we will walk you through the basic of QGIS. Module 3 will show you how to enhance visualization of spatial data and lastly in module 4 how to prepare your own map in QGIS. Module 1 Introduction to GIS This module has four learning objectives. At the end of this session you should be able to have some basic understanding of what a GIS is, understand the key components and functions of a GIS, understand how spatial data is represented in a GIS, and understand how data are stored and accessed to use in GIS mapping. Let's define GIS. A geographic information system is a computerized tool that is capable for capturing, manipulating, and displaying features that exist and events that happens on the earth. It is the art of combining geographic features that have location information with a computer system of hardware and software and data to produce results and outputs which can be used to support or contribute to better informed decisions about a feature or an event. There are five key components of a GIS. First one is data. Data which have spatial context. The data comes from survey, census, historical maps and records. This data is what is stored, processed and analyzed in a GIS system. The second component is hardware. This is the infrastructure that provides us to store manage and process the data. So the hardware includes the devices that are used to acquire data, for example, GPS devices and field data recorders. It also includes computers that are used to store and process the data, as well as devices that are used to produce output, such as plotters, printers, and displays. The third component is the software. There are a wide range of software that is available to perform GIS. The most common, which is a proprietary software, is ArcGIS. And the other open source software is QGIS. A fourth component is, is method and application. These are the algorithm that works inside a GIS that helps us solve spatial problems. The last but not the least component is people. Interesting concept that people are very important in the GIS. And the word information itself should emphasize why humans are important. Because GIS is needed and plays an important role in converting data into information for human consumption. So people are needed to help achieve these goals. This includes data managers who are responsible for taking care of the data, data analysts who process the data and ask questions from the data, and data users who take those answers from the data and make informed decisions. Now let's look into the basic functions of GIS. There are four basic functions that GIS always provides. These are data capture, data management, spatial ana analysis, and outputs. There are various sources from which a GIS gets data to use in its application. It provides tools and methods for the integration 
of data into a format so this data can be compared and analyzed. Scanned paper maps, aerial photographs, existing digital data, GPS and remote sensing images are few sources used in a GIS. After the collection and analysis of data, GIS facilitates the storage and maintenance of the data through effective data management, data security, screening, data storage and retrieval, as well as maintenance are some of the aspects of effective data management in GIS. The GIS also function as a spatial analysis, which allows to interpolate, buffer and overlay data across regions or places. And one of the most distinctive features is its visual presentation of results, which are in the form of maps and images. This provides better results compared to traditional methods of tables and graphs. In order to visualize natural phenomena, one must first determine how to best represent geographic space. There are two primary data models that are used in GIS. These are raster data models and vector data models. Raster data models are images which are stored as rows and columns, and the units are represented as square grid cells that are uniform in size. In contrast, the vector data models are objects that are represented as three distinct spatial elements. These are points, lines, and polygons. Let's look in more detail about the two data models. There are three vector types in the vector data models and each of them are represented differently. Points are used to model single discrete features such as buildings, trees, power poles and more. And lines are used to represent linear features such as roads, streams and so forth. And polygons are used to represent features such as city boundaries, geologic formations, lakes, soil, land use, and others. The raster models are image files that are made up of pixels or square grid that are uniform in size. Raster provides the best format to represent data that changes continuously across the landscape, such as rainfall and elevation. As shown in the image on the slide, there are two raster layers and three vector layers. Each layer represents a real-world feature, which are anything you can see on the landscape. In this image, the raster layers represent land use and elevation, and the vector layers are represented by the political boundaries road network, and people. When you combine all these layers together, you get a representation of the whole area. Attributes gives more information about a feature on the map. Both raster and vector layers are supported by attribute tables. In the raster models, the cell values known as digital numbers are the attribute. For vector layers, attributes are linked to each data element, such as features, name, coordinates, and areas. As you can see in the example on the slide, it shows the EEZ boundaries for the Pacific Island countries. Each polygon represents a feature within the layer which, and 
appears as a row within the attribute table. You will learn more about attribute table in the next module. Also, you need to understand that the layer on the map view links with the attribute table. So when you select a polygon on the map view, the same corresponding row on the table is highlighted. GIS relies on data and the ability to manipulate this data to answer spatial questions. This data can be stored in either local computers or other infrastructure that are secure and allow easy access and retrieval. Special data in its query capabilities in a GIS enhances the value of the information. Imagine trying to stack two Excel spreadsheets in order to see a pattern. It is difficult, right? But this can be done easily in a GIS. In summary, in the first module, we learn about what a GIS is, the five key components of a GIS and the key functions they perform. We also learn about the two major data models used and how they are represented in a GIS. We also discussed about attribute table and the different methods of accessing and storing this spatial data. Lastly, to help you remember these main concepts, there are four questions that we would like you to reflect on in your own time. Number one, define what the GIS is. Number two, what are the five key components of the GIS? Number three, give one of the main functions of the GIS. And number four, what are the two data models used in a GIS? This is the end of module one. Talk to you in the next module.